My name is Margaret Harvey, and I'm a trauma survivor. I was on my way to work one day, and I was riding my bike, and uh, a garbage truck came along and turned in front of me, and knocked me down, and, and ran over uh, ran over me with the back two sets of tires. It was a major trauma. My pelvis was fractured. There was a lot of internal bleeding, as well as um, lacerations in my groin. That was about three weeks that I was here. And then I got moved to a rehab hospital. So in total, it was about four months before I went home. I had been in a wheelchair and I had graduated to a walker. So I was walking with a walker, but I thought that that, that would not take long for me to get rid of and that I would be fine. Um, but the reality is I wasn't better and things became much more challenging couldn't parent my children the same way. I didn't have the same level of patience. I didn't have the same energy. I didn't have the same physical capabilities. And I didn't know if, if, it, if it was something wrong with me, that I wasn't better. And I wanted to talk to someone else who had been through it. I did find a trauma survivor network that was based out of the US and I, tried to find out if there was anything like that in Canada, and there wasn't. And I had spoken to my surgeon at St. Mike's, and he had agreed that it was a great idea and that he would help me when the time was right. So my name's Amanda McFarlane, and I am the Trauma Registry Manager at St. Michael's Hospital. And when Margaret came, she told a really compelling story about her own injury and where she thought that there was a gap in our care. And it was easy for us to see that that gap, gap was there. She brought it to us and we were just, yeah, absolutely, we need to look at this. The thought was that it would be just, we could just model it after the U.S. because they had done all the work. But it turns out that it wasn't <laughs> as simple as I thought it would be. I had we gathered together a team of experts. We had nurse practitioners, we had social workers, we had uh, program leads, we had managers of the departments, we had physiotherapy, we had a psychiatrist. And most importantly, we had two patient advisors, Margaret and another patient advisor who joined us for that planning process. It's her place to talk about what's going on for her, but she doesn't have to caretake anybody, because that's what happens mm. as a patient is I think that was one of the things that made the planning of the program quite unique. I know, I've been there, it will get better, I don't know what it's going to look like. They were instrumental in ensuring that we had a day session and a night session um, to accommodate the needs of trauma patients who don't necessarily find it easy to get out of bed early in the morning. There's a lot of issues, <laughs> like a lot. They also suggested that we try and find a place away from the clinical areas um, to have the meetings, um, you know, just in case it was a trigger for them if they had, you know, been in our hospital. Went on the radio and did some newspaper articles and. That's how we initially got the word out. Yeah. I use social media a lot, Twitter. So welcome. And uh, thanks for coming tonight. And you've already sort of started while I've been puttering around, um, <laughs> doing what we're supposed to be doing here. <laughs> Most people who haven't experienced trauma in their life, they would say stuff like, oh, don't worry about it, it's nothing move on, you know, get, you'll get over it, and they don't quite understand. You know, the stone ages and the famine that we've had, our bodies are programmed to want to hold on to or wait because 
It thinks that that's what's needed to survive in the wild. We have expert speakers who come in for these meetings. To feel guilty or get down on yourself because you're not the person you once were. And, and they've been the ones who've suggested speakers. They've asked for someone to come and talk about pain management and they were the ones who asked um, for our dietitian to come. I think we would probably like to expand the program. We would like to meet more frequently. What this program does, it's very comprehensive. It looks at multiple areas of need post-hospital. Post-hospital, so there is such a thing. It's like, you know, an after, after life, after the hospital life. <laughs> That's what it is.